and we are live good evening everyone hello and welcome it's time for another exciting episode uh, of it career in australia channel and tonight's topic is top tips for landing your first ux design job um thank you so much for finding some time to join me this evening we have a record amount of people registered for this stream tonight i think everyone out there want a ux design job by the look of it so <laughs> so you're in the right place so thank you so much for joining me for joining me um please um don't forget to introduce yourselves in the comments um let us know what you do and join our conversation with your questions and comments or at least please say hi in the comments so that i know that you're here um so just quick reminder, I'm Jana Martins. I'm currently working in IT consultancy. So I'm passionate about learning more about present and future of uh, tech industry. So, and obviously I uh, love sharing it with you on this YouTube channel. So again, tonight we're gonna to talk about top tips of landing your first UX design job. And Sam is going to share a bit of his story um, a bit of uh, tips, experience, challenges, surprises, and you know the factors that can help you to land your first job. So please make sure to tag and share this video with your colleagues and friends who need to hear this. Um, so, and before, before we'll dig in and I'll uh, pass it over to Sam to introduce himself, I just wanna quickly remind you this streaming, we streaming live on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. So if you miss the stream, don't worry, like you can always watch the replay by subscribing to my YouTube channel, IT Korean Australia. I go live uh, there every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Melbourne time, and we talk about various things uh, around IT, um, career job search, and in and outs of the tech industry in Australia. So make sure to join my meetup group as well. Um, I would love to start running some face-to-face -face events. I think the next face-to-face -face event might be coming end of September. So keep an eye, would love to connect with you guys in real life as well. Um, so please uh, also use this live stream as your opportunity to network with the people and not only just learn some new information. Okay, so ask as many questions as you want, just stay on the topic as well. And remember, we always have a nice surprise uh, at the end of the stream for the most active participants. So that's, you know, a lot a lot of me. Uh, we have people saying hi. Sepeda here, LinkedIn you sorry, sometimes LinkedIn not showing your name. Um, Joffy here, Leona here. Um, looking forward to hearing your tips, Sam. So perfect. Thank you guys for saying hi in the comments. Please. Uh, I know you're watching, make sure to say hi. Um, Dan is here saying hi as well. Thanks, Dan. Um, <laughs> uh, that's enough of me. Sam, please, over to you. Uh, please introduce yourself for those who doesn't know you. <laughs> Thanks, Jana. Uh, so, yeah, my name's Sam. I've been in the uh, design industry or, or design consulting industry for my whole career. Uh, my whole kind of career really so um over a decade now uh, initially kind of starting off uh as a ui developer with a uh, microsoft affiliate uh, consultancy uh, if you can remember those kind of bog standard uh windows 8 mobile applications uh, we were building a lot of those for um for enterprise organizations um and yeah it wasn't until about uh, nine years ago when I came over to Australia where I really dived kind of deep into human-centered design and that was with uh, a data analytics consultancy called uh, Servian. So I, I was initially one of uh, two designers at the time. We uh, grew that to over 10, um, which uh, I was uh, lucky enough to uh, be kind of really across the 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 um, leading leading that team and, and working across a bunch of, of different projects uh, within the, the enterprise space. Uh, a couple of years ago, I then moved across to a venture studio called uh, Helix Collective, where I uh, was kind of focusing more of my attention on the early, early stage startup space, more predominantly within um, the uh, crypto and, and web free 
uh, point of view and, and, and perspective. So really kind of quite fun, um, quite uh, volatile in terms of the way that uh, that things are at the moment with crypto, uh, but um, really, really interesting uh, projects and ventures that we were working with. Um, and then, yeah, around, around uh, eight months ago, kind of looked at uh, going out on my own and, and uh, delivering my um, my own uh, consultancy, uh, which is called Celestial. Uh, we work with both uh, early stage uh, startups, uh, providing that kind of extended uh, design capability for uh, mostly tech uh, founders. And then uh, within the enterprise uh, space as well. So bespoke kind of enterprise uh, UX as well. So uh, kind of really interesting in terms of where we're going and, uh, and yeah, love, love kind of talking all things design and that's why i'm here perfect perfect thank you thank you sam is uh, a lot of people keep saying hi so you have a lot of fans here um, <laughs> um ocean here sidra here sadev saying hi nicholas Catherine, um daniela here we go so full house full house today thank you guys for saying hi it's all this you know warms my heart that you're saying hi so i know that you're watching not just you know silently silently sitting there so anyway sam let's dig in into the topic obviously um we're talking about you know um, getting this first ux design job which could be challenging uh, because there's all this is catch 22 you don't have experience you need a job to get experience um, you need a job to get experience, but you don't have a job, so and and it's all on going on circles. So, um, I guess what is a bit of a you know, it's been over a decade ago when you get your first UX design job, but I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure you have um, a lot of tips to share um, for those who are in the beginning of the journey. So, what is basically the landscape at the moment? So, um, I know you have, uh, you know, a few, few numbers here. So, what's, what's the reality today of uh, career of UX design? Yeah, I, I guess from a perspective of when I, when I first was applying for jobs out of university. So, at, at university, I did, like, physical product design. Um, so, and really loved the uh, two modules that I did within kind of web web design and, and engineering. So really wanted to go into that. But um, I think like a lot of people, when they uh, they do a degree, they're, they've covered a lot of wide variety of topics. And they're like, okay, now I want to go into the industry and I want to get a job which I'm, I'm really passionate about. But everything is very, very broad. And uh, your, your skill sets maybe don't align to those particular job roles um i remember i i had a spreadsheet where i would uh kind of put in uh a row every time i would apply for a job an, an entry for a, for, an, for a job and it got to around like 120 150 uh like row spreadsheets so i it did take a lot of uh, a lot of effort um it was it was very hard in terms of i was applying for anything and everything um and uh in the end i got my i got my kind of first break by uh someone through my network so they ended up taking a chance on me when maybe i probably didn't really deserve that chance because on paper uh i didn't have the experience or i didn't have the uh expertise to really kind of go through that but um i guess kind of going back to those uh slides in terms of uh, the reality of uh careers so yeah you do you do have a lot of people applying for a single a single job um and then within the kind of guarantee of employment there's no in guarantee after graduation which is why we have uh things like career acceleration courses which go deeper into those uh particular uh skill sets so within ux design there's a, a series of uh, career acceleration courses that you can do. So um, I am a, a tutor at uh, Harness Projects where we kind of go uh, deep into UX research, um, the full end-to-end -end product design and then ad advanced prototyping. So going deeper into UI patterns and, and Figma and things like that. So it is very kind of uh, saturated market at the moment um and i feel like the those kind of acceleration programs do help um and bring 
uh, a, a series of experience for you um, as you don't yet have those uh, qualifications you don't yet have that experience to to, to go on to um, and we'll, we'll touch on this in a bit uh, a bit later in terms of your portfolio is a, a must-have when applying for a UX design job uh, applying for roles and I know a lot of people do get bogged down in, in their portfolio but there's some high level things that you can do to really bring out uh, some of those, some of those aspects, and one of those is having a personal brand and being able to um, kind of speak to that personal brand, and it gives you a bit of differentiation. Um, and then, lastly, the last two, last two points around uh, being having that kind of uh, culture fit and attitude. Again, that kind of links nicely to your personal brand, and then. Again, as I mentioned uh, earlier, in terms of uh, uh, having that network is is really important, and it will kind of put you in uh, positions that uh, you may not have, have got in otherwise. Yeah, and as you mentioned, you got your first job through network, then because someone took a chance of you. And I think uh, a lot of us, majority of us, probably will have a story that someone took a chance of us. Um, but uh, I think um, I really like the saying. Uh, not fake it till you make it, fake it, fake it till you become it. So there is nothing wrong that <laughs> give, give yourself a bit of a benefit and a doubt and uh, try to feel the way that, you know, you belong there and uh, try to act like, like you deserve it. And, uh, you know, things, things, things do happen. So, but um, yeah, in reality, it's usually people that you know that will give you a chance. It's probably rare that someone receive your resume on seek and will be like yeah yeah i want to just give the chance this person <laughs> yeah sure. so there is this personal touch that 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 makes a difference um so i know that we're gonna so there's a lot of actually people saying hi i just want to basically be nice and uh, make sure that we say hi to them as well nakan is here ari is here um srileha is here i like how she said hi in both platforms well done <laughs> Uh, Alero, Nikki, James is here as well. Perfect, guys. Thank you so much for saying hi. Really, really appreciate um, you know you joining and joining and participating. So, okay, Sam, uh, I know there is the kind of four factors um, we want to talk about today. Hopefully, we'll have enough time for all of them. Um, so, the four factors that you already mentioned, I guess, uh, briefly, but. Um, uh, let's just kind of summarize again the the import the factors that are important that you're applying for your design role. Yeah, sure. So um, <clears throat> I've categorized those previous uh, sections into four areas. The first of which is education, and not really like uh, education of like yourself, but education of the the, the UX field and the different uh, job titles, the the areas around like what is required for those those different uh, job job titles and then almost trying to align yourself to one of those is uh, a good uh, good barometer to see how you can kind of move on to into a particular role uh, the second of which network I think we we mentioned uh, earlier in terms of being able to network with um, not just like potential employers but uh, other designers uh, and and uh, just people like recruiters as well just to to ensure that you are getting your your name out there and you and people do think of you when opportunities do arise uh, portfolio again super super important as a designer um, a lot of that is um, people almost over slightly egg the importance of a uh, a case study i would look at saying okay with your case study it should be more about how you story tell as opposed to these are all the things that i can do within my case study i think that's a lot of, uh, we'll kind of jump into that a bit later and then lastly uh personal brand so uh personal brand is uh yeah just trying to trying to bring out your own personality and uh what you you differ from so for example you may have worked in retail um during university and that might have brought some uh like soft skills and and um and what dealing with um 
dealing with queries and, and requests and, and that could really kind of help bring out some um, additional soft skills which would help going to play for uh, for a UX design role. So we'll go and jump into that as well in a bit. Yeah. So I guess, you know, the, we're going to go, we try to go through all the factors uh, tonight, but yeah, let's start from the beginning. Um, obviously, the first one, education, but more, as you mentioned, it's, uh, um, being aware of the market and, uh, you know, different, different jobs there. So, I mean, I, to be honest, um, that's the first time we run the live stream about UX design. Um, that's not something that, you know, I, I never recruited for UX design. So that's something quite, I don't know, like, from the whole idea, I'm probably the furthest from UX design. And, um, you know, just looking at your next slide there and, the, you know, looking at the, all the different titles there, <laughs> it's already confusing enough. So I imagine, like, as a graduate, uh, when you look at all those titles, you're like, okay, so where am I actually need to apply? What's going on here? Yeah, and, the, like, it's... It's so confusing because a product designer can be a UX designer in one uh, one uh, company and then they might be a uh, CX designer in another depending on the the work that they're that they're doing. So um, it, it can get complex, but there's nuances between each and every one of them. Uh, for example, if you're kind of going into UX research, you're you're kind of getting more into something both quant and qualitative data you're interviewing people you're you're doing a lot of the um stuff which requires uh, soft skills as opposed to your kind of hard uh, technical skills um so having having a view of all of those different parts uh of the of of, of a job of a job title and just being able to understand okay like what best suits me in in terms of, of going forward is is definitely uh something that you pr should probably have have an eye on um in the kind of generalized kind of bucket of uh of job roles we have product designer which is your kind of standard uh where you're doing anything and everything across the design space. So you might be doing a little bit of UX research, you might be doing a little bit of UX design, and then you might be in Figma for uh, like a few hours a day, just working on um, prototypes and building out wireframes. So um, yeah, it, I think as, a, as someone who may be just graduating from university, if you're looking out for UX, UI, UX slash UI designer roles or product designer roles, then that's probably the best place to start looking as it is a very kind of generalist type role. Yeah. And um, I guess um, I, in the beginning when you, you know, you want any job, would you say just apply for <laughs> all of them? <laughs> like how do, how do you decide, you know, like you, you're doing uni, you may be done like, or like you may be moving to your ex design job from a, another industry. Um, so what, I guess, which, which role do you think the easiest one to enter? I hate to say it or is depends. it not, or is it not <laughs> such a thing? <laughs> I, I hate, I hate to say it depends, but it, it depends. Uh, it, it depends. It depends on your portfolio. Um, it depends, like what you've got within your within your case studies. It depends what uh, market you're going into, what industry, um, whether you have an interest within that industry, um, and whether your portfolio actually speaks to that industry. So, as a as a hiring manager, when I was at Servian, for example, we would put out a job ad and we would get maybe two, 300 responses. Uh, and as a hiring manager, I wouldn't see those. I wouldn't see every single response. The talent acquisition team would filter through and say, okay, what about like these five uh, profiles? Um, but they have to sift through like every single profile and they have a view of what they're looking for. So when when applying to roles, you need to kind of really look at um, at being being a maybe a little bit more strategic to think. Okay, is this role gonna uh, gonna get me a, uh, a an interview, or is it gonna get looked at? 
um again i would say it if it if the effort of applying is is next to zero you're literally just throwing across like a a cover letter uploading your cv and and um and attaching your portfolio then that's that's not so much of an issue but if you're doing like a couple of hours of uh changing your portfolio around or like a day half a day to change your portfolio to suit that particular uh job application then that's when it maybe isn't as worthwhile to apply for unless you're really set on that particular job job description and role. Yeah. So it's basically kind of trying to understand um, where where your skills are more into design or maybe more to people, maybe more to data. So kind of trying to trying to do some uh, self research in a way before before going and applying. Yeah, yeah. So, for example, if you've come straight out of university and you've gone more on the visual side of things, and uh, you're you, you you've maybe done some freelance graphic design work, then maybe you might be more suited towards like UI uh, visual design as opposed to as opposed to end to end kind of UX design. So, again, like having having a view of of where you want to get to, and then um, being able to uh like design your portfolio around uh your kind of perfect job is is a is a good kind of starting place yeah definitely and um i guess do you see any difference in terms of um company um companies that out there so obviously you know uh, you mentioned here that with uh, startups scale ups enterprise sort of levels do you think it's easier to get in to any particular um of those companies so again it's like depends <laughs> uh again i think it it's a good it's good to kind of have that knowledge in terms of uh each of these three are kind of slightly different so i in my experience early stage startups focus more within the ui space uh you have like product managers and founders who are really doing that kind of ux research or they're they're building upon hypothesis that they've hypotheses that they've taken from industry or that they've um, they've uncovered within trying to find their product market fit. Uh, so uh, you, you you'd be mainly mostly seen as maybe a UI um, capability. Whereas if you're looking at more the um, kind of scale up growth type organization, so if you, if you think like uh, Canva or a um, ship it, for example, that both um, scale up organizations within within Sydney, um, they would be kind of end to end product design. So you'd be doing a bit of user research, you'd be doing uh, UX design, you'd be doing UI, you'd be doing the full end to end journey. Um, then kind of going more into the enterprise space. So you think like your big banks, so your CBAs, your Macquarie's, your Westpacs, you might be kind of getting more into segmented type roles and teams. So you might just be a UI designer where you're just working on a, a sign up flow for a mortgage uh, application. Uh, you might be just purely doing user research and working with like the CX and marketing team to work out, okay, what copy is best for a certain email, which we're going to push out for a campaign. Um, that, yeah, it differs slightly from, from organization to organization. Um, but then you've got that kind of middle ground where you have consult like a consultancy which can span across any of those kind of stages yeah and i guess we coming back to uh when you're applying and there is so many different titles it's also like your day-to-day -day activities will really depends of the company size as well so and the same job title could mean different things for for different companies yeah for sure for sure yeah. and uh, i guess like in terms of uh like design maturity you might you might go into a large kind of enterprise organization where their design maturity might be relatively high but then a certain business unit might be kind of going rogue and hiring a design designer or 
a design team where their design maturity is really low so you might be kind of more focusing on just like the ui aspect or or just one kind of segmented part of the of, of that role so it, it can it can differ but i i think that is the general rule, rule that i've seen over my time in um in in industry do you think it's um uh, do you think there is any benefits of working in a smaller bigger company when you're starting out like would you tell that people who are starting out, it's maybe better to go to enterprise and focus on one thing? Or if they starting, someone starting out, it's better to go to, I don't know, start up and trying to do, uh, I don't know, like uh, f- five different five different roles like startups usually do. Like, do you think any pathway is better in terms of UX design career? Or is it, again, really personal choice? I think it's personal choice. I'm going to be slightly biased and I, I was kind of working in a um, a small design team where I was working across multiple different clients. So I got exposure to lots of different um, des- like parts of, of design. Um, if you are, say, coming in as a graduate to a like bank for example you might get shoehorned into a particular role and maybe like some aspects of that might be quite slow because you might be doing business as usual type type stuff bau type stuff um you're probably going to be learning at a quicker place at an early stage startup but you might not have that support from a structured design leadership senior leadership type type position so i think when you are looking at applying for those roles it's always worth um calling out or asking in interviews to see okay what what is the structure of the design team um what is the support like from a senior uh, level uh, is uh, design placed within uh within leadership if if not and you're like the first designer of the of the team um or of the organization then that can potentially raise a couple of red flags but um i guess it it depends on your particular appetite in terms of if you want to if you want to learn learn more and and be able to really kind of take the the bull by the horns um i wouldn't yeah i wouldn't say don't go for that particular role just because you are the only designer because there's ample opportunity to to learn more about tech and other other stuff so um my first my first role as a designer i was the only designer on the team and it really pushed me to learn more about the technical side of of things and and be be more aware about data and and uh and more like the 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 data pipelines and understanding how how stuff works as opposed to kind of getting into what they call the pretty pictures. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Makes sense, makes sense. Um, so, okay, let's, I guess, let's move on to the second bit. So the second fact is like network. And uh, to be honest, we already have a question. Uh, I might just bring questions straight away. We will already touch on a little bit about network, but Mariam is basically asking, how do I network as a person from a rural area where there are no events related to tech? Well, I think you're you're networking now. So, uh, <laughs> like asking questions like that is 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 good. So you're you're kind of putting yourself out there. Um, so I think that that's good. There's there's a heap of online events. Um, a lot of them are at very kind of low low cost or free. Uh, so if you look on like meetup.com, um, being able to see and understand like what what's good from like a online perspective. Um, ADP list is an amazing designer people list is uh, is an amazing resource to one network with designers um, to get feedback on things like your portfolio to understand like their particular uh, job roles and 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 where they where they're at um, and then I, I guess also reaching out to to recruitment agencies as well so myself being in Sydney the kind of two uh well-known ones are Acquient and uh 420 consulting um they're they're reaching out and then being uh, able to communicate with them in terms of what value you 
you are adding, I think is super, super Im- important. And then they'll think of you when, um, when their uh, potential opportunity arises and then put you forward for a role which otherwise you would have had to have applied for and then been um, like had to go through that full end-to-end process. So there's been a couple of times in my career where we've had a, uh, a recruitment agency kind of reach out to us with, hey, have you have you seen this person? And they had already applied for the role, but didn't get through and slip through the net from our kind of internal talent acquisition. Um, and we ended up hiring one of them. So <laughs> it's, it's definitely, definitely worth kind of reaching out with, to, uh, to your network. And that network is, means like recruitment agencies and, and trying to build that rapport with them. Yeah, and, and that's that's a great point as well because a recruiter can uh, also present your profile differently. And uh, if there is uh, like you know two hundred people applying for one role, <laughs> where is uh, where is also a chance that you know uh, that they can they can help you to stand out as well. Um, yeah, and with, with with the recruitment agencies as well, like they have that they have that element of trust with the. Um, the end client so they may have already put people into roles uh, previously so if they're putting forward a recommendation of hey what what about this person then um they they might already have that trust with with that with 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 that recruitment agency so it's definitely worth worth doing yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, I guess, yeah, so you, I'm, um, to, to answer Mariam's questions, yes, you, you're networking now, so there's so many people commenting on the, on this stream. You can probably connect with every single person who commented and uh, make new design, uh, UX design friends there. Uh, but yeah, sometimes the personal touch is always, you know, uh, can, can take you further, but there is uh, definitely a lot of online communities. And um, if you, um, stay in touch and with ongoing communities, you can network quite effectively as well. Uh, but yeah, we, no one cancel the, you know, that personal touch. It's, it's always good to take people out for coffees and, and have a chat. Um, so where are we at now? So network, um, so, and network leads us, lead us also to, um, other things such as portfolio and stuff so it's all it's all interconnected i guess yeah everything's connected um you you want you want your kind of tone of voice and and personal brand to be kind of sitting across all of this whether it's your cv your linkedin so make sure that that all of that is kind of singing from the same hinge sheet and then lastly your portfolio is uh aligned to one like your kind of overarching tone of voice and i I guess at the the, this kind of moment in in time where we've got things like uh chat gbt um being able to uh align to one uh tone of voice is uh, not super easy because it's uh it's hidden hidden art trying to ensure that you uh you keep it to a, a same kind of, of tone and ensuring that you're you're giving the right prompts but um yeah it should should be should be all kind of consistent in terms of the way that you you, you speak from from each and every single artifact that you're that you're kind of pushing out yeah yeah so it's not only about your resume it's that holistic approach to um your personal brand what you're putting online what's um you know how you connect the networking events so i guess that bringing it all together because yeah at the end of the at the end of the day personal brand it's what people think about you <laughs> yeah for sure yeah yeah okay so uh, let's dig in a little bit more into portfolio because i'm sure people have a lot of questions around that as well um and uh, i guess my first question is how hard it is to have a portfolio if you never had a job in the UX design? 
Uh, it, it, it can be quite hard, but there's also some experiences that you can draw on. So, for example, if you have gone through university, there would be university projects which you can be able to showcase within uh, that case study. Um, again, remember going back to doing your research on the particular job role or job title that you want to be kind of going into. Make sure that you uh, repurpose that uh module or, or, or piece of work to really suit that particular um, that particular case study or, or, or field that you want to go into. Um, one, one area that I do see a lot of designers making mistakes is that with their case studies and their portfolios, they're trying to almost describe everything that they did within a certain project. And it's not like listing a checklist of what you did. It's about how you can storytell and, and really showcase and take the user or the reader on the journey of um, this is the problem that I had and this is how I solved it. Um, essentially, as a hiring manager, we're looking for people that can problem solve. It doesn't matter if you're um, doesn't doesn't matter if you're inexperienced or experienced like everyone has that ability to to problem solve and being able to showcase that within a kind of short concise uh case study is is probably the the, the way forward and what people look for yeah definitely i think you have a few specific um, tips there about how you can um start with designing your portfolio yeah, so this is from a webinar from Andrew Doherty. He used to be a, uh, a UX manager at Google. Um, he's he, he did a TEDx talk around uh, how he managed to uh, UXify the, the process of getting him that job at, at Google. And uh, a couple of uh, comments that he made. So, yeah, um, your design must, your portfolio must be online. I kind of sort of agree with that. Uh, like sometimes if you're in a large enterprise organization, like a bank where they've got um, uh, like security, um, cyber, cyber mm. security, and it's like, oh, we require a PDF portfolio because we can't go onto those particular websites. Uh, so sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. But ideally, you're, you're going into an industry of digital, you should have a digital online presence. So ensure that you have a a website up on up online um within within that there's the whole manner of different uh ways where you can um look, look at rolling you, your your own uh, portfolio and, and using portfolio sites to do that um and then kind of going into uh like project experience again it's hard to have that project experience without having project experience but um kind of utilizing your own personal experiences from university, from your own kind of uh, experiences from work experience. If you had something which is maybe transitional from in and into the, the UX design space or alternatively doing things like design challenges to showcase that you are building on your craft. So again, your portfolio is something which is just showcasing that you can do the the role that you're applying for and it's showcasing that you have got that craft and it's showcasing that you are building upon your your expertise and and and, and your day-to-day -day craft the the kind of process of after you get through the front door from the from an interview it's then showcasing the other stuff so your soft skills and then trying to build on those technical skills that that you have within 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 interview Yep, yep. So basically, you know, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Make sure it's online and make sure you have a PDF as a backup in case you're applying to <laughs> applying for a bank position. I think you also listed a few sites that uh, um, um, you recommend to use. Do, do you enjoy yeah. using a particular one? Or? So my, my favorite is Webflow because it has like, I'd say better interaction points and you can really build your own personal brand within that. Uh, Squarespace is a bit more rigid, but um, I think if you're looking at getting something out 
which is really simple, I would probably recommend Squarespace because it's just it's easy to easy to do. You can get something out in a couple of days, whereas Webflow, you're downloading a template and you might get a bit fiddly around around certain aspects. Uh, you've got Behance, which I I think is a good way of showcasing like lots of work but it doesn't really showcase that kind of own personal brand so i would look at kind of going into like the the, the kind of top top row sections that i that i've just mentioned so wordpress and, and wix is also a nice a nice kind of easy easy one to roll through yep yep um and um what are the things that uh, you recommend to include into portfolio so yeah Definitely having an about page. So uh, just talking a bit about yourself. Um, again, if you have that experience, which uh, is you feel may not be transitioning into uh, design, uh, but people may read that about page and it will tell you a bit more about that person as a, from a personal brand perspective. Uh, I was chatting to, I think Leona's on the, the chat now I was chatting to her this morning around uh, her kind of personal brand, and she's she has an experience experience doing uh, lettering for five or six years, like as a as a graphic designer, and that wasn't prevalent in her uh, portfolio or within her case studies. So having putting having that within uh, the about section, it one tells you a bit more about that. Um, that person and it also showcases that from, from my perspective it showcases that she has an attention to detail which can easily be transitioned into ui design for example so you've got those like really transitional skills and it 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 shows that like you're not you're not coming to something completely raw you've got experience within the workplace yeah so makes sense um yeah, and then free case studies. I'd say free as a as a minimum. Um, it doesn't. I I don't think it really matters as to whether it's uh, whether it's uh, their their live or, or projects or or their their mock projects. It it doesn't doesn't really matter as long as you're able to kind of tell a story and talk to the um, the what you learned throughout that process i think is definitely um like definitely worthwhile so yeah as long as you're able to tell a cohesive story and and able to uh really showcase what you what you learn along the journey then i think that's good and then uh lastly a niche so for example if you're super passionate about web free or or fintech or decentralized finance then uh, look at building your personal brand and your experiences or ideas around around that um so it then can look at transitioning into those particular areas and then as a hiring manager again it's the person that would look and see that see that work be like all oh, right okay that's potentially a good fit for us um, and again, as long as you're able to talk to those experiences and what you learned along the, the process, then again, it doesn't matter if it's a mock project or a, a, live, a live project. Would you say, um, like, I mean, if you're applying to the different companies and the different domains, um, would you have a few different portfolios or would you try to adjust those case study? Like if you, um, I don't know, applying for a different domain, you would <laughs> pick those studies closer to that domain or how would you go with that so that, you know, you're in line with what company is looking for? It can, that can be hard because you, you that that's when you get to the point where you're spending like a few hours applying for a particular role um, and maybe yes if you had that experience so like for for example if we're working or we're pitching to a client we would have a series of case studies which we would look at, at swapping in and out based off of the industry that that we're in but we've already already done that work and it's literally just 
replacing that with like particular IP. Um, if you have a very kind of structured way of uh, doing that and you're able to slip stuff in and out within like you're attaching it to your CV, then maybe, but having stuff online, I would recommend just having those kind of three or four key case studies, which you do kind of uh, speak to. Otherwise you're just getting, you're getting, you're getting, you're going to have like 10 different variations of the same thing. And it's going to be, going to be hell for you to look at altering and, and, and redoing. So yeah, I think your, your time would be better spent elsewhere. Yep. So, so they've tried to try to pick the niche and stick to it, um, especially maybe in the beginning for the first job. So kind of uh, align it with the uh, align your niche with sort of jobs you're applying and uh, and and try to concentrate on that. Yep. Yeah. Or, yeah. Um. I like. I. I'd say if you do have that passion and interest, yeah. Um. But again, try and be quite general in terms of like the especially if you are at the start of your career try and be quite general in the way that you kind of talk about it from like an end-to-end -end kind of ux perspective because um unless you're like super super passionate and want to go into that particular job area so if i'm if i'm super desperate to be a ui designer and be be across design systems then i would look at um building out my portfolio and case studies to just purely look at the nuances of around around like the ui design and 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 building out like fancy animations within figma and and showcasing that yep yeah cool makes sense um sam well, i'm cautious about the time we've already passed 45 minutes and we have quite a few questions maybe we'll quickly answer some of the questions that come through in the chat. Um, so, uh, Srileha is asking, um, thank you for sharing all your insights, Sam. As a digital designer who works at the agency, what skills would you suggest I acquire to become a UX designer? Do you recommend any courses that are out there? Would you recommend any particular course for someone who's switching their career? Yeah, so uh, the, the kind of entry level kind of course, which a lot of people do is the Google uh, Coursera UX design course. It, it kind of teaches you, and it's probably only around two weeks uh, in, in length, but it teaches you the core fundamentals of a uh, UX. Um, I know know a few people that have done that and then have managed to build out very successful kind of portfolios off of that and managed to get jobs from just doing that course. So I think that's a good a good example to go into. Um, then if you are kind of looking at doing, um, if you are looking at going into it seriously, um, you could potentially do uh, a like harness projects course, for example, where you do like free projects across six months across UX research, end-to-end -end product design, and then uh, UI design. So I think those are those are the two recommendations. And then you've obviously got like General Assembly and Academy XI as well, which kind of go into those um, those niches as well. Yep, makes sense. Ari has a loaded question. <laughs> we can give the quick answer, I think, on this. I live in New Zealand and I'm wanting to move to a different country after I graduate. What countries do you recommend? Sam, which country won to hire a lot of UX designers? <laughs> well, uh, it's, it's, it's a tough market at the moment, especially within uh, Australia and Sydney. But I think if you're a New Zealander, then the the kind of obvious next step is kind of making that trip across the water to, to Australia. So um, I think, yeah, there's no, there's no issues with uh, PR if you are a New, New Zealander. So, uh, yeah, I think that would be the obvious next step. Um, I'm I'm from originally from London. Uh, I enjoyed living in London, but uh, yeah, for me, Australia is trumps it. I think there's a lot of factors that contribute to the choice of the country, Ari. So uh, you know, so just. <laughs> 
just give it a go, give it a go. Um, another question from uh, Mariam. I want to ask about getting a mentor as someone new to the career. How do I go about that? I guess yeah, it's a big so, question, but yeah, if we ask, I guess, briefly. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, again, I mentioned ADP list earlier. Uh, that's a fantastic uh, resource to get mentorship. Uh, if you kind of jump onto ADP list, sign up, um, you will see that there's um, there's thousands of, of mentors online which um, give up their their time. It's all all, all free. So uh, yeah, feel free to jump on that and try and find uh, someone who uh, who kind of fits where you want to go and uh, try a few out and then and then yeah, kind of work with with, with, with them to to build out a kind of next step in your career. Yeah. Um, Sipideh asking, um, thanks for helpful information. I graduated with Master of Design UX UI Design at Griffin since 2022. Should I take a UX UI course to increase my chance to get a job? It depends how much detail that they went into at Griffiths University. So um, is... Uh, are you struggling to get a job? Like, are you, are you um, kind of going, have you got like a portfolio and the kind of strategies that we mentioned, is that kind of ready to, ready to go? Um, if you kind of look at all of the strategies that I've kind of mentioned and, and, and thought, okay, I, I may need to look at kind of expanding my skill set again, then maybe. Um, but yeah, you may, I think yes. with a master. <laughs> <The> answer is yes. <laughs> right. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah it depends on your own personal situation, but if if it is, yep. then yeah. Yeah. So so the, uh, there's an extra extra step to um, to build that portfolio, I guess. Um, so um, I'm just really cautious about the time. We hardly um, had the chance to talk about the personal brand. Uh, but I think we can mention briefly about it. And also, uh, Leona is asking, you know, what would you say is important to include in your personal brand and uh, any tips on uh, outlining the soft skills? So, yeah, personal brand, what, I guess, what the main main tips there? Yeah, and again, I think we kind of covered this as, as, a, as an overarching theme across, like, all of the, all of the, session so ensure that you are kind of keeping in mind that vision of that dream job that you want um and then trying to kind of uh, build build up that personal brand from from there um then looking at tying in from like a problem solving aspect and, and showcasing like how how you are able to problem solve and think like okay were there any roles uh that i was working in that um maybe transition from a design perspective where i can uh uxify that particular problem to then uh, associate to to potential side projects um i think yeah those those are kind of definitely definitely worthwhile and then lastly from a perspective of looking at what you're passionate about i think 100 percent if you're passionate about a certain field or, or area and that shows within your portfolio and cv then you're you will differentiate yourself from the rest of the crowd because it it shows that shows that you have that drive and and ability to to really build build out that personal brand and and get that job yeah and uh, leona has um, um one more question i guess uh kind of related to it. Um, the cover letters, can it be really just three, four sentences? How much weight does it hold? Um, is the cover letter still the thing? In the, in I've, I've never read a cover design? letter. No, I've never read a cover letter. I'm sure some people have, but um, I, I would say put very minimal effort into it. Uh, again, kind of going back to Andrew Doherty's uh, talk he had, a uh, cover letter where he literally just say it says use use this framework literally just fill in the blanks and you're able to literally get yeah, that's all you need um yeah i wouldn't yeah wouldn't wouldn't put any effort into that 
I kind of feel with the UX design job uh, because it's so visual, people would pay way more attention to portfolio than the cover letter. Uh, maybe yeah. for other, like some different roles, like, it depends. I know, like, I, I've been interviewing kind of recruiters uh, and we touch on that topic every now and again. And there is a paralyzed opinion. Some people love cover letters because it's, they feel like with pe people did something extra and like went extra mile. And some people don't even bother about cover letter. They just kind of, you know, <laughs> flick through and never read it. So I think it's... Um, really depends on your hiring manager and recruit as well. Some people like them, some people don't. <laughs> yeah, my, my, my process is usually going straight to their CV and trying to scan where their online portfolio is and then jumping onto their online portfolio because that will tell me much more about them than a CV or a, a, uh, a cover letter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And especially, yeah, especially if you have something uh, visual, um, I would, yeah, I'm not recruiting UX designers, but I would feel it's a logical thing to, to jump straight into visuals <laughs> instead, instead of the reading cover letter. Um, Sri Leha saying, thank you both. That's helpful because I'm starting my Google Coursera as well as Academy um, X Y uh, UI X course next week, so this is great. Mm, Perfect. You're gonna be busy. You go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you exactly mentioned that course. Perfect. Um, LinkedIn user, sorry, can't see your name. Awesome uh, overview, Sam. A lot of valuable advice. Uh, you also mentioned side projects, so you get um, brownie points for that. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so I'm just cautious about the time. We literally have three minutes to finish this live stream. So we're going to exciting bit of the stream, the giveaway. So giveaway is the virtual coffee chat with Sam. So, you know, we will have a lucky winner who basically can take um, Sam out for the virtual coffee chat and ask more questions. Um, so Sam going to look through the comments and think about who will be this lucky winner. Well, I'm going to announce the speaker for next Wednesday. So next Wednesday, it's already September. Yes, we're coming into spring. I'm excited anyway. Um, 6th of September, next Wednesday, I'm going to speak with Natalie. And we're going to talk about unlocking the non-technical skills to become a successful CIO. So, yeah, so it's anyone out there thinking about that you want to, you know, maybe you're just looking for your first job, but your goal is become CIO at the end. You need to watch our um, next um, talk next Wednesday with Natalie. So she will definitely give um, a lot of tips around those non-technical skills. And uh, I'm sure they helpful across all the jobs, uh, job titles, not only CIO. But obviously the goal, the goal is there. Um, Sam, how did you go? Did you pick the winner? Uh, yeah, I'll go with Sid. To, to deeper if i said that correctly yeah um, I'm, but, I'm, I'm always feel like cautious and pr pronounce people name and i'm always like oh my god i hope i'm pronouncing it correctly um so deeper please please make sure to connect with me on linkedin because it's really hard to connect with people on youtube i'm struggling if um, you know i'm trying to do the giveaway and i don't have you on linkedin please connect with me on linkedin or message me on the meetup group so I'll make sure I'll connect you with Sam and that uh, you can have a virtual coffee chat and ask all these questions. Uh, so hopefully uh, get get some additional help. Um, thank well, um, you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I guess if, if anyone wants to kind of uh, connect, then feel free to reach out. I'm always happy to provide uh, mentorship on ADP list or um, any other kind of platform. So feel free to get in touch if, if you if you do want to chat. Perfect. Miriam, that's back to your questions. Uh, be proactive. <laughs> be proactive and uh, make sure to make sure to reach out. Um, so the people saying thank you. Thank you from Morty. Um, so Sam, and just we have uh, 30 seconds to finish this live stream. Can you please share with us your favorite inspirational quote? Just to put you on the spot quickly. Favorite inspirational quote. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> It's not so much a quote. It's not so much a quote. It's more like uh, when when um, 
when Steve Jobs announced the uh, release of the iPhone and then he talks about like the the way that he introduced and communicates the value of the iPhone by setting it up by talking about okay we've had phones we've had uh we, we've had email we've had uh we've had web and now we've had iTunes where you've had a thousand songs songs in your pocket put all that together and now here's the iPhone like that's for me is the one of the best kind of uh presentations that I think I've, I've I've ever seen so I'd watch that on YouTube every few months <laughs> so there we go every few months uh please uh um share it with me later and I'll make sure that I put it in the comments so and uh, if everyone want to get inspired from another Steve Jobs interview uh, make sure make sure to click and watch so uh, and uh, maybe we can pick a quote from there later so I'll watch I'll watch I'll pick a quote from there <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Uh, it's been great. I've, I'm sure we covered a lot of, um, con like we definitely covered a lot of content today and the, you get um, some great tips for everyone there looking for UX design jobs. So obviously uh, you can see there's a lot of people listening, there is uh, definitely a lot of people want to get into the field. So good luck, everyone. Um, thank you so much, Sam, again for joining me and I'll see everyone next Wednesday. Thank you, thank you, thank you. See you.